Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is the second part on the series on the if function intuition for beginners. I strongly recommend that you watch the first video where I lay background on the if function, you know, the syntax and some pitfalls to avoid. But yes, you can still hop on this video and get some value from it. Okay, in this video, I want to answer a very fundamental question, which is how many ifs do I need? you know, to get my results, okay? This happens in scenarios most times when you have more than two outcomes. The examples we typically see are, oh, if this, yes, no. Or what are situations, you know, where you could have more outcomes than two? How many if functions do you need? I would give you a simple example, which I used in the first video. I say, if you read, you will pass, else you will fail. Now, in that sentence there you can see that one there's a condition which is if you read now the two outcomes are you know you either pass you know or you fail okay so there's one if function you know are two outcomes what if you had you know more outcomes would one if be sufficient let me show you a simple example that will make this make sense if you look at this expression here you can see this the simple syntax for the if function if you have a test you have the true, you have the false. So let me write a simple if function like that. If, and then I just do a simple test, two less than three. The moment you put a comma, you see that it's asking you for the value if true. I decide to put the value yes there. Okay, now you can see this if only shows me two outcomes, the value of true, the value of false. Now, if I put a comma, now it's asking me for the value if false. If I decide to put an if there, now by doing this, I have now opened myself up to a new set of value if true, value if false. Meaning that I have yes, which is one outcome. I can have one outcome in this value if true or in the second if, and I can have another value for the value if false in the second if. Meaning that now I have three possible outcomes by using two ifs. Okay, so three outcomes and two ifs. And that's how it increases in that arithmetic progression. As you can see in my table, three outcomes, two ifs. And if you go to four, it goes to three. So my simple, um, you know, formula here is that the number of ifs is the number of outcomes minus one. Okay. So once I know the number of outcomes, I subtract one from it and it's going to tell me, you know, the number of ifs that I need. This is a simple, you know, table that highlights that. And let's take, you know, the first example to think of this intuitively and see if it makes sense. If I have just one outcome, it says here that I need zero if, meaning I don't need an if function. And that makes sense because the if is a conditional statement. It means that it's only useful when you have more than one as in possible outcome. Okay, so if I'm always going to get 100, why do I need an if to tell me that? Because I will get 100 either way. So the if is useless. The if would only make sense if I could get 100 or 50. And there's a condition that determines if I get 50 or if I get 100. So that makes sense, right? So this table will prove itself useful. And this is how I've chosen to approach it. You know, just a simple table using the number of outcomes to determine the number of ifs. You can come up with a more complicated one when you now want to roll maybe up the outcomes and the conditions and, you know, but that could get really messy. So let's stick with this, you know, and just have this at the back of your mind. That the number of outcomes less one is the number of ifs that we need. Okay, so let's take this example and see what we can do with it. So I have a table that shows some names, you know, their ages and their salaries. Okay, and I want to check if they are Forbes worthy. Okay, and then there's a criteria for being Forbes worthy. If you are less than 40 years and you earn above 40k USD, then yes, you are you are Forbes worthy, else you know you are not Forbes worthy. Okay, so read again: celebrities less than 40 years and earns above 40,000 USD. Display yes, else display no. The first question I ask you so that we can determine the number of if we need is how many outcomes do we have? Don't confuse the confu um, the uh, <laughs> so I wanted to say don't confuse the confusion. Don't confuse <laughs> the conditions with the outcomes. Okay, so the outcomes are what yes and no. Those are the outcomes. Those are the only two things that can result from all this mumbo jumbo, right? So it's yes or no. So it means that we have two outcomes. You can go back to your simple table here. 
if you have two outcomes, you obviously just need what? A single if. It doesn't look like, you know, that would work because this looks more complex than needing a single if. Yes, you will need to be creative with your logical test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and say if. I don't know what the logical test is now. That's the elephant in the room. I put a comma. My value if true. I put it as yes. And in the first video, I emphasized that if you want to show text or strings, they must be in double quotes. My value if false is no. These two I know. Okay. So now I need to come and figure out this guy here, which is what the logical test. But I know that I'm using just one if. That's how I've chosen to approach it. Now, when you look at the condition, you can see that the condition isn't just one. It's actually conditions. Okay. So you know that, yes, the if has just a logical test. So you also start to feel like, okay, maybe I actually need more than, you know, one if. Right. But at this point, what I will say to you is that what needs to happen is some creativity with the logical test. You need to introduce a function which we typically use a lot of times when we use the if function. And that function is called the and. What does the and function do? The and function just tests a couple of, you know, as in conditions. And if all of them are true, the and returns true. The and only returns true if all the conditions supplied to the and are true. Okay, so in this case, we need both conditions to be satisfied. The age should be less than 40. The salary should be above 40K. So we just pull up an and in here and you can see, you know, it says checks whether all arguments are true and returns true. So I open my brackets. My first test is to test the age. Is the age, this age, is age less than 40? Okay, that's the first thing. Then the next thing is is salary greater than forty thousand. So this whole thing here is just my logical test. That's the value is true, yes, and the other one is no. Okay, and then we press enter. Let's see if this makes sense. This guy is less than forty, yeah, and he's barely above forty thousand, and that's why you have yes. Do we have any other one? Uh, scroll down. Okay, there's one here. Yes, he's also less than thirty and above. 40,000. So you can see that even though it looked like it was really complex, all I needed to know first of all was, okay, can I do this with one if? Yes, I think I can. You can do it with more than one, but you know, that's how I've chosen to approach it. I just look at the number of outcomes. Based on that, I get the number of if functions I need. Then I just need maybe some creativity, you know, with the logical test. And that's how you know you get this to work it's not really a video you know based on me writing a lot of formulas it's more like you know helping you to think through these things and internalize it and once you know it makes sense to you you can easily write the e function without thinking too deeply about it so i hope you enjoyed this video you know please click the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments so till i come your way with part three on this series i would say I'm out.